All right, thank you. Yeah. We can, uh, yeah, put the screen up here. Everybody got my mic, everybody good? Yeah, I think the goal here is to build something quick. Let's get Helen a picture of one of this. Oh, yeah. You ready, ready, ready? All right, all right, here we go. So uh, the goal here is to build a dApp quickly. I'm assuming that you guys know uh, a, a lot about Ethereum and I don't have to give a lot of introductions, but I, I will say quickly that the Build Guild is a DAO that is focusing on developer onboarding and education, developer tooling, and we give grants. Uh, Speedrun Ethereum is the place to go. If you have technical friends that are trying to learn how to build on Ethereum, send them to Speedrun Ethereum and they'll be able to go through a lot of these concepts that will help them get straight to the aha moments that uh, we found worked really well. You go through all the way building the decks and, and get crazy with uh, a lot of the concepts. Uh, the thing I'm gonna show today is Scaffold ETH, and this is kind of at the heart of the Build Guild. We do a lot of prototyping and a lot of product building and a lot of testing and trying. And we wanna create a hackathon stack that's easy for you to sit down and bang out a hackathon project where you're focusing on how you want your app to work and not tinkering around with stupid <laughs> wallet issues and network issues and all the stuff that comes along with building uh, your own stack from scratch. And so uh, here we go, let's get started with Scaffold ETH2. So there's kind of a choose your own adventure here. You can do an MPX create ETH and if I put that in here and make it real big so we can see it and then I hit paste, it's going to ask me what I want to call my app. I'm going to just going to, I think I'll just run with this. Let's see if it works. We're going to call it ETH Burr. Let's go. Foundry or hard hat? Any votes? Yes. Just going with Foundry. <laughs> and that's probably actually going to take a little bit. I probably should have thought about maybe we go into this and do some code. There we go. Okay, so here is our code. We have ETH Burr here and uh, we've got packages and foundry, and we're gonna have some smart contract here. So here is our smart contract. You kinda, yeah, I kinda have to have this like super big just cause it'll look weird if I shrink it too much. Sorry for this giant big code, but I think it's the only way to read it. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a, smi a quick smart contract. And let's say we're writing our hackathon project and we're not sure exactly how we want our solidity to work. We know we want it to do some certain things, but you, you need to tinker a little bit, usually. You can't just like, from memory, you know, you have a shower thought and you just sit down and write the whole smart contract. Sometimes that happens, but a lot of times you need to write some of it and then try it and then write some of it and try it and there's kind of this iteration process. And I wanna show you that and that's kind of like the key of what Scaffold ETH gives you out of the box. You tinker with this solidity, but once you've got it tinkered with, it's only like a couple more steps to basically deploy that app all the way live, both to a live network and a live URL that people can click on and use your app uh, live. I'm saying live a lot. Okay, let me CD into ETH Burr. Oops, I think I, oh man, did I run this from inside? This is gonna get weird. I'm like in run project in another. If some weird problem happens, I think it's good so far. So I just did, so when you go to Scaffold ETH and you install it, it's gonna ask you to run a few things. The first thing is this yarn chain. That's just running that Anvil node from uh, Foundry, or yeah, I don't know, whatever the other, it's running a local blockchain. So we've got a local blockchain here, and then we're gonna do a yarn deploy, and that's gonna deploy our example smart contract to our local network. I need to go into ETH Burr here. And then we'll do a yarn start. So, so we have a local blockchain and a local front end. And we're going to deploy our smart contract to our local blockchain and we're going to tinker with it on our local front end. So let's now go into localhost 3000 and we should see the landing screen for Scaffold ETH, hopefully. There it is. Okay, this is what Scaffold ETH looks like out of the box. Uh, we've got burner wallets over here. I'll kind of talk about that uh, in a little bit. There's a nice little faucet here we can gas up. And then we kind of have this nice like kind of fake home screen that we'll eventually carve out. Scaffolding is sort of, you know, stuff you put up around a building, then you make the building beautiful and then you tear the scaffolding down, right? So we will tear some scaffolding down, but it's nice to have right now. This debug contracts button right here is probably the most uh, important right now as we're trying to figure out what the heck do I want my hackathon project to do. 
And so I'm going to write very, very simple solidity. You will have to, in the next couple of days, write some more advanced solidity. Uh, but I'm going to make just like the simplest little change here. First of all, let's just dive into this contract. Let's look what we have. So it comes out of the box with like a greeter contract. There's kind of a set greeting here. And we can go play with it. We can say, OK, let's set the greeting to hello world. It's going to complain here. I know it's going to complain, but I want to show it. It's like, oh, man, you don't have enough ETH, right? So I need to get some ETH. And that's what this uh, grab funds from the faucet button does. It gives me one ETH. OK, so now I have ETH. I should be able to make a transaction. The transaction just goes. Notice I just hit the button, and we see the greeting update. This is that burner wallet idea. If I open up an incognito window and I go to localhost, I'm going to have a completely different wallet here. See how this is like green guy, and this is like purple guy over here? And we'll, we'll use that to test a few things. But just know that that's here for you being able to tinker quickly. Instead of having to have a MetaMask pop up and have it on the right chain and go through a bunch of headaches that you might have with MetaMask. We just have a burner wallet. It's just a private key and local storage. We load that up with local ETH, and that lets you just click these buttons. So if we go look at that greeting function, there's something interesting in here. Basically, it's a payable function, and if you send value along with it, we set some premium flag to true, right? So let's see that. Let's send some money in, right? And if I want to send in 0.001 ETH, this isn't going to work also, right? This is a developer's uh, uh, interface here. This isn't a user's interface. So we make the developer, oh, it's not a big int. We make the developer hit this button right here. And this helps it make it clear that you're sending in way and not ETH. And it's just one of those things you have to learn as you get into Ethereum. So we're going to say, hello, world. We're going to send in 0.001 ETH. And when I hit send, that premium flag goes to true. And that's the, the thing where we wanted to see there to make sure that that code was working. OK, so you'll spend a lot of time in your Spark contract. I'm not. I'm going to just quickly bang something out here. Uh, I'm thinking about making like a, hmm, like some kind of counter, maybe like it, it just like the, the dumbest little simple app just to show something, right? We'll have a counter. Uh, maybe it starts at zero, sure. And then we'll need some function, right, to increment that. And hopefully, Copilot just takes over here. Perfect. There we go. And what I want to do is maybe have some address that comes in here that we're incrementing the counter for, but it's not who, it's like who it's for. I don't know. I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. Basically, what I want is my address to go increment a counter for someone else for some reason. But just this is just an example in Solidity to write a little bit of like not complicated, but kind of complicated Solidity. So what we'll do is we'll keep track of uh, mapping, right? And there'll be a user counter, and we'll let anybody increment anyone's counter. I just made this up on the spot. I <laughs> don't know if it's going to break. But basically, we want to say who it's for. What do we want to do? We want to go to user counter, who it's for, plus equals 1. OK, dope, perfect, good to go. That's our whole smart contract, probably. So this right here, this is the moment. So I've got Solidity over here, and I'm writing my Solidity. And then I'm ready to test it out. I want to try and see if this does what it needs to do. I'm going to do a yarn deploy. And that's going to push a new contract out here. And now look what we have here. We have the, the user counter right here. And we have this new function increment. So you have this front end here that's auto adapting to your smart contract as you're making changes to it. That's just a really nice feedback loop when you can tinker with how your solidity works. Uh, and basically, let's just make sure this does what we need it to do. Uh, you put in someone's address. Let's do vitalik.eth. Look at that nice ENS resolution. And then you hit send. And hopefully, what that does, it, it, it's incrementing the overall counter, but it also should be incrementing a counter specifically for vitalik.eth. Yeah, so if we go read that, we see that it's three, right? And if I change this to like atg.eth, 
and I hit send, I've, I've incremented mine one, right? So Vitalik is still three, the overall counter is four, and atg.eth is one, right? Okay, so we've tinkered with our smart contract. Maybe this doesn't work exactly how we want it to, and we wanna get back in here and make some small changes, uh, but I'm in a hurry, and I'm just gonna say, hey, this is done, this is good. So, so phase one of building our app is done. We've basically written our smart contract, and it does what we need it to do. Uh, we could test a lot of other things out here. That you, you're going to spend a lot more time here. We're not going to write any tests. You should write tests. What I'm doing here is just like quickly prototyping. Basically, we have a counter. We have an increment function that lets us increment the overall counter and some counter for some user. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to show off some front end stuff too. But let's pretend like you've written your hackathon smart contract. It does what it needs to do. You sort of tested it out. Now it's time to move over to the front end. So if I get into the front end, I'm gonna go to my app. So now we're on the next JS side, right? Now we have to start writing some of that dreaded React code. This solidity is so nice and clear and it makes sense, but we're about to get into a different territory over here, right? This is React code. All right, so this is our front end and here's where it's displayed. It's this, this home button again. I don't think you can see that. It changes colors. I don't know why it doesn't do that on projectors. Okay, so we're over at the home screen. You know. <laughs> we're over at the home screen, and we want to edit this page, right? So let's consider this front end is for developers. This is the tinkering, the debug page. Your end users are not going to see that, right? You've got your smart contract written. You've tinkered with it. Now it's time to actually make the app work. You need your users to be able to come to a URL and hit a button. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So, <laughs> what a poser, what a poser. Okay, so I'm gonna go to this page and I'm gonna clean some stuff up here. Let's delete all this stuff, delete all this stuff, hit save. Let's see what we got over here. Yeah, okay, cool. So now we're just seeing who the connected address is, but we've got some real estate to work down here. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna have a button that lets me increment that value, that counter, right? So maybe the first thing we should do is show the current count. So let's dive into that. How do we read from our smart contract in our front end? And we're using uh, kind of these, we're using WAGME, but uh, kind of we've wrapped them a little bit. Use scaffold read contract, right? I'm gonna use this hook right here. And I'm gonna say my contract, and watch this, there's, there's all, uh, I'm gonna hit control space and it's gonna tell me exactly what I need to type. I'm gonna hardly type anything here. A colon and a quote, and then I hit control space again, and it's like, oh, your contract, right? It knows my contract name, right? And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna hit control space and it's like, oh, you need function name. I'm hardly writing any code and Copilot is trying to help me as much. This is the most important part. Look how cool this is. So I'm in my React right now. I'm writing a hook that's gonna go read from my smart contract. And as soon as uh, I get to this moment where I'm trying to figure out what's the variable I need, it knows. It's, 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 it knows all the variables in my smart contract and it's giving me uh, the, like the, hint at which one I want, and I think what I want is just the counter. There's like another total counter in there, which is kind of confusing, but that's like in the smart contract, and I don't think I want anything else, and I think there's a thing called data that comes in here, and we'll just rename that to counter. So hopefully what we've done here is read from our contract and get the value of the counter, and I think I need to two-string that thing. Yeah, let's do that, let's do that. There we go, hit save, what do we got? Four, look at that, okay, so we're making progress here. We, we know who the connected address is, and we know the current count is four, right? So we're using these WAGME hooks to get the connected address, and we're using a kind of a wrapped WAGME hook called use scaffold read contract to read from our contract. Now it's time to write to our contract. So we're gonna, need, we're gonna use another hook, and that hook is called use scaffold write contract. And in here, I just put in some quotes. This is super hard for me to read, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm not quite fully TypeScript pilled just because of this mess. When I see this, like my brain just does not go, oh, you need to put in a, a, a quote around that and write that. It just doesn't make sense to me yet, but I'm, I'm getting there, it's getting closer. 
Okay, so now what comes back from this, so we're, we're using this use scaffold contract write hook, and it's gonna return a write async, write contract async, that's what I want. I'm gonna rename that to write your contract. So now I have this nice little uh, object or function, I don't know what this is. We have this nice little thing called write your contract, and now I can call this thing whenever I want, and it's gonna help me write to my contract from my front end. So let's get a button going here, right? Let's uh, maybe create a new div. Don't, don't ask me to try to center something in this div or we'll be here all night. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so let's see what, uh, uh, let's see. It looks like it has, it's not exactly what I want there. I just let Copilot take over here and it kind of did some drunk driving. So I need to, uh, on click, I want to call write your contract, which is this object that we have here. And I'm going to send it in an object. And in that object is the function name I want to call. And this is really nice, right? It's going to give me the tab completion, right? I get that ink right there. I don't even have to like type the names of those functions. It's going to give them to me so I know they're correct. And the increment button, does that take? I think that takes in that address, right? So we need to send some address there also. Uh, for now, let's just hard code something, right? Let's just grab this dude's address and let's throw that in here and we'll just increment it on, on that dude's address and hit save. Okay, let's see if this works. Oh, that looks ugly. Let's, I'm not gonna center it, but I'm gonna at least make it look like a button. Class name is button. BTN dash primary, we're writing, we're writing React code. We're such hardcore cypherpunks. We're making our button primary. Okay, here we go, increment, does it work? Uh, it's like not, there it is, there it is. Okay, it's just a little slow. Increment, and then it takes a little time for that to read, but it is incrementing. And if we were to even grab this guy's address and go back to debug contracts and check the specific user counter for this address, we'll see that it's been incremented four times for this address and eight times total. Okay, let's do one more thing. H how long do I have, by the way? Is this going till, do you, do you know uh, how long I go for? Sorry, just making like a, 23 minutes left, okay, cool, yeah, okay, that, that's plenty of time. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I wanna add in here is uh, an address input. So uh, this address component is really nice, right? If we wanted to show an address, let's, let's just back up a little bit and show that connected address without that, right? So let's take this address component out just for a second and let's just say, just display the connected address raw right on the thing. Not with that weird B, but that's what it ends up looking like, right? That's a super ugly. You do not want to display that to your user unless like you're going for that vibe. Most likely you want to display a nice looking address uh, with the blocky and a link to the block explorer. And you get all of that out of the box with scaffold ETH. You get that nice address component. And when I click on that, it's going to take me to like a block explorer, right? And when I uh, click this, it's gonna copy it. I get the blocky, it's just nice, right? So we want that, but let's do an address input so they can enter an address. Now, if I just put a form in there and I have them type in an address, what if they type in an ENS address, right? Oh, I gotta build ENS resolution into my form. You get to this point where when you're building apps, you realize there's all these extra components you need to make the UX work, and Scaffold ETH has that out of the box, so it's just, we've thought about all this stuff, we've built, we've come to all these hackathons and we build lots of things. You're gonna need these sort of components out of the box as so we try to provide them for you. Okay, so what we need is an address input, right? We want to, uh, we want to create uh, who do you want to ink for, right? I don't know why that is a thing. And we're gonna create an address input. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, maybe like we say, enter an address. Okay, and then we'll have something called new address here, and then there's gonna be a set new address to, and I think this is just a value. ChatGPT is a little bit off here. Or not ChatGPT, I'm not copy pasting from ChatGPT. Uh, there we go, address input. Uh, do I just close it? Let's see. 
Oh no, it's not happy about something. Oh, I probably need to install the address input. Yep, import that from scaffold ETH. There we go, are we happy? Autofocus, nah, let's take it out then, fine. Okay, uh, there we go. So we have this address input. Ah, see, the things that are read now are just the fact that we are trying to use these state variables and they're not defined yet. So I have to do this normal thing where I come down here and I bet, yep, it knows. Thank you, that's exactly what I need. All right, I think we just added an address input. Oh, no, no we didn't. I need to install this. Import that, all right, now we're ready, now we're ready. All right, we got our app up, right? So we have, who do you want to increment for? We have this nice address input. And when I type in vitalik.eth, it's gonna do the ENS resolution. It's gonna give me the, his ENS avatar. It's gonna give me the blocky. And then when I hit increment, actually it's still incrementing for my address. I remember it's still hard coded into the button. We need that too. Right here, right? We need to put in new address. There we go, there we go. Okay, okay, let's reload. What happens if we increment now? Is that like the zero address? Oh, it does not work, no, <laughs> okay. So what we need to do is we need to put an address in there and then we need to hit the increment button and we'll see the global counter increment. But if we go back and we look at the user counter for that, we see eight. Uh, if I had more time, maybe I'd go make another read hook and I'd read in that user counter. So then you could see your counter and the user counter. Uh, but we do not have that kind of time. Um, let's talk about the phases so far, right? We edited our smart contract and we worked through kind of exactly how we wanted it to work. We tinkered around with it using this debug tab and we really got our contract figured out. This error is making me feel weird. Okay, cool. So once we figured out how we wanted our contract to work, we moved over to working on our front end. We built out a nice little front end, and now technically we can like go here and use the app. Let's pretend like your app is gonna be much more complicated than my stupid counter, but you're kind of getting the idea here. You can fill in the blanks in terms of making the complex solidity, but hopefully this gives you a quick starter kit to be able to interface with your solidity and eventually build out your app. I'm gonna say this app is pretty good. It basically does what I need it to do. I kind of want to maybe like have, if I had more time, I think I would add a little bit more here. I would definitely like center this thing, <laughs> right? I would, I would do some things to make this look nicer, but this is a demo. I'm going as, as fast as I can here. Let's just pretend like our smart contract is good now. We've tinkered with it. Now our front end is good. Our front end is talking to our smart contract. We're ready to put this thing out into the world. We want to deploy it to a live URL so then when we go turn this into the judges on Sunday, they can just click a link and they can use our app. They can connect their wallet and use it. Increment a counter. Hopefully you guys do something more cypherpunk than a counter. But let's pretend like we're ready to go. So. What are the steps of deploying this thing live, right? We're gonna have to put the smart contract out on a public network, and then we're gonna have to deploy our front end out to Vercel, to uh, a URL. So uh, the steps are, if, if you don't, if you're new to Scaffold ETH, you can always go to the docs here, or the GitHub, and then if you read this readme, it's gonna take you through all these steps. We kind of did the, the yarn install, the yarn chain, the yarn deploy, the yarn start. Uh, but what I wanna get down here to is the yarn generate, which it actually isn't here. Okay, maybe that's into the documentation somewhere. Uh, but what you need to do is a yarn generate. And yarn generate is going to create a local deployer account and it's going to automatically git ignore it and we're gonna only send just enough money to this account to deploy the smart contract. We're not copying, pasting private keys around. We're not using our main account to deploy contracts and accidentally deploy that contract at like way too high of gas and spend thousands of dollars on accident. This is very isolated. We have this nice isolated account, uh, which I will bring up here, and I'm gonna send some money to it and I'm gonna deploy my contract. Okay, so here we go. Uh, oh man, I need, I need a punk wallet. Here we go, here we go, Punk Wallet. Okay, so I'm going to punkwallet.io. This is a wallet built with Scaffold ETH. I'm gonna go to mainnet Ethereum. Should we deploy this on mainnet Ethereum? All right, let's do it, yeah, let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's take some things out. If I'm putting this on mainnet, the, the more I pay for, the worse here. 
So let's like maybe just comment out as much as I can. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's okay. I don't care. I don't care. Star slash. That should be good. Okay. Uh, it's, it is going to complain because I think it's in the deployment. I think it is passing in a, uh, an address. Yeah. Oof. Where is that? This is hard to read, Georgios. Uh, let's see. Uh, right here. I don't want to send anything in there, right? Yeah, let's see. Let's just go see. Let's just go see. Yarn deploy. Let's see what happens. We're tinkering. We're testing our assumptions here. Let's see if this works, first of all. Nope. No, it did not. Uh, let's line 11. Let's get that out of there. Wait, did, so did I do it wrong? Oh, man, I don't even know. It's right here. It's this, right? I just don't want that. Here, here, whatever, whatever. We'll keep all of this stuff the same. I'll go back to my contract, and I'll find this constructor that has an address in here, and we'll bring that out here. I didn't save it. Is that what happened? Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. So see if it, oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so go back to this display script, take that out, hit save. I definitely saved that, didn't I? No? Let's see. Nah, there's still line 11 to line 16. Okay, I can get rid of that other line. Oh, this is something else. It's a different script or something. Oh, man. Okay, so I'm not going to mess with that. Let's, let's go back. Let's leave it exactly how it was. And let's just have our constructor function that takes in the owner. And let's keep track of the owner for some reason. OK, and let's hit Save. Now, please work. Please deploy. Oh, no. OK, there's something about the greeting. Where is that? Uh, actually, let's just bring the greeting in, too. <laughs> let's put it on chain. Why not? Uh, yeah, right there. Save, deploy. Please work. Mm. Nope. OK, where is that set greeting? Let's get in there and take care of this. Sorry, this is some dumb debugging. My, my apologies. Uh, it's not that. It's not that. It's not that. It's that right there. Get out of here. Yeah. All right. Oh, man, it didn't like that. Did I make bigger problems? No, that's not even. It's, it's got to be in my test script. Got to be right here, right? And then we do deploy. Oh, there's where the owner address comes in. Wait for deployment. What if I just like take all of this out? Oh, man. Where is that? OK. Good lord. Uh, scripts, deploy. Is it in here? Yeah, yeah, right there, right there. Here we go. Here we go. Comment this. Comment this. Oh, man, I probably broke like a bunch of tests just now or something. This should. <sighs> yeah, no kidding. I might have to. How, how are we doing on time? How much time do I have? Tell eight, what? 15 more minutes? Shoot. I could start over. Which directory? OK, so wait, wait, let me figure this out. We have, oh, why is this, why, why, whoa, whoa, why are we looking in hard, hard hat? That is a great, why was there, oh, because I had one inside of the other. That's why this whole, I knew there was going to be some weird problems here. Yep, OK, so it's right here. We're in the hard hat. This is where that thing was. Uh, where is that weird? Here, right there, right? This is it. This is it. There it is. OK, OK. Uh, let's see. We, that, there's where the constructor came in. We could have taken it out there. Yeah, I knew I was getting myself into trouble here. Right there, right? The greeting. Let's just like uh, not run this wherever this is getting run. Here, I'll just do this, right? 
I don't need any tests. That, that's, those tests threw me off. We probably shouldn't even have that. Well, it's good to have the example. Oh, it's, it's taking more time now. Woo, okay, great. Now we, <laughs> we our app, okay, let's back up for a second. We spent some time working on our smart contract. Uh, we've cleaned it up now and it looks good. We tinkered with it and we got it to work the way we wanted it to. Uh, we are only deploying it locally right now. We got our front end built. Uh, now what we want to do is deploy this to a live network. And so right now it's just deploying to uh, localhost, but we generated that account. So let's do, let's do that yarn account again, and let me send in some ETH and let's get started. Okay, so I am going to send, how much ETH do you think this is gonna cost? Maybe like 30, 40 bucks? You're saying 60? Whoa, you sent this address? You said the QR code was up? Okay, let's, let's, let's prove it. Oh, no, it doesn't have any mainnet. You sent me Sepolia, is that right? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not trying to do something on Sepolia. Yeah. You sent me 69 ETH, man, that's gonna change everything. All right, let's see this one more time. Do I have mainnet ETH? I do, we are ready. All right, we have mainnet ETH in this account. So just like we were doing that yarn deploy, now we're going to do a yarn deploy dash dash network mainnet? Oh man, this is bad. Don't try this at home. What's gonna happen here? Cheers. Holy smokes. I think we're waiting for a block to mine, aren't we? What are, what are guesses? What are you guys guessing that we paid for that? Let's throw out some guesses. I'm gonna say 25 bucks. You going south of that? Higher or lower than 25 bucks? 15, 40, all right, we got some good, good guesses out here. We'll be able to figure it out pretty quickly. Okay, so our contract is deployed, but our app is still pointed at uh, Foundry, the local host stuff. So you'll need to go into your scaffold config and you'll need to change this one value. See this target networks value? You can set your target network to whatever you want. Why does that say hard hat though? Shouldn't that say, am I, am I into hard hat again? Have I like, I think I am, holy moly, okay. I should not have created a project inside of a project in a live demo, and I'm learning that quickly. Uh, let's see, so uh, holy moly, we need to go to the scaffold config in the correct next.js here. There, now it says foundry. Okay, so your whole app is pointed at whatever networks you tell it, and currently we can see our app is pointed at Foundry. So what we need to do is just come in here and make this one change. We need to say mainnet and hit save, and I'm gonna speed that up too, and watch what happens. Our whole app reloads, uh, it disconnects us and it doesn't allow that burner wallet anymore. I hit connect, I connect my MetaMask, I have to type in something, please don't expose that. <laughs> All right, look at this though. Now our app is on mainnet Ethereum. Even though we're still on local host, we're actually talking to our mainnet Ethereum contract. And I can go back over to debug contracts and I can look at things. I can say, you know, what's the user counter for me? And I can debug and I can poke around. We still put that greeting on chain, I'm so glad. Let's see how much it costs. So here's our smart contract, if I go click on it, and I go over here, uh, let's see what this transaction costs. Also, here's the contract code. Like, we could verify that here. All right, it, what? Oh, make it bigger, yeah, yeah, sorry. Only $7, I mean, that's not bad, you guys. We just put a counter that, we just put an immutable counter on chain that no one can stop. That's kind of cool. Maybe not worth $7.93, but maybe it is. I don't know. It depends on what you're building. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's get this thing fully deployed, right? We have our smart contract out there, but unless we want people to interact with our smart contract going to Etherscan, they're going to need a front end to go to, right? So we need to add that last little piece here, and that is a different command. It is yarn vercel yolo dash dash prod. 
One of my, one of my most favorite commands. I don't want to f- around with types. I don't want you to complain about anything. I want you to put that thing out there. All right. So yes, we want to deploy that. Sure. No. We're going to call this uh, no. We're going to call this ETH Burr. Yes. Why are so many questions, man? ETH Burr. No. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Man. So, yes. Yes. No. No. There we go. ETH Burr. ETH Burr. Ship it. Yes. Okay, that's going to take some time, maybe like four or five minutes. Uh, so we, that's all we have. That's perfect. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's just uh, kind of rewind and talk about what we did here, right? We, we went to uh, Scaffold ETH. We grabbed, we could either clone down Scaffold ETH or we could do MPX create ETH latest. Don't create a project and then get inside of that project and create another project or you'll have all sorts of problems. <laughs> But that's what I did on accident. But normally, just do MPX create ETH or get clone into a fresh folder, right? Then we got into that folder, and we had Foundry and Next.js, right? And we got into our Foundry, and we worked on our contract for a while. And we didn't know exactly how we were going to write our contract, but we knew sort of directionally where we were going. And we worked through that. We, we created a counter. We created a user counter. Uh, oh, by the way, this tinkering process, you can always go to the Solidity docs or Solidity by example. This is one of my favorites. And you can just kind of like come in here and pick up these concepts from Solidity by example and, and paste them into your scaffolding smart contract. And your front end is going to auto adapt to that. So we tinkered, right? We, we got into our smart contract. We tinkered around. We use this debug page uh, here to kind of like figure out what our smart contract is doing and how we can interact with it. Then once we had the functionality of the smart contract working, we moved over to our front end. We added some UI elements. Maybe we might hide this debug. Maybe we'd clean things up and make it look a little bit more professional. And then we're ready to deploy, right? Then we did that yarn deploy, and we put our smart contract out on a, on a public network. And then we changed that one variable in there, in that scaffold config. We changed it to mainnet. And then our whole app is now pointed at, at mainnet Ethereum. So he, here we are, like straight up uh, incrementing the counter on mainnet Ethereum, but we're still on localhost. And if this thing finishes in time, I'll go make a mainnet Ethereum transaction. Let's just do it from localhost first. Who do we want to increment for? Let's increment Vitalik by one. OK, this is, what is this going to cost me? Oh, 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 our live app is ready. Our live app is ready. Let's go, let's go. We don't, we don't want to, we're not going to use localhost anymore. Yeah, OK. Now, I think technically I need to get into my Vercel and make this app public. Uh, which is like one setting in Vercel, it's not a big deal. But anyone can go to this app now. I could basically put this app in a QR code, you guys could all shoot it, and you would land here at this page. And you could connect your wallet. Okay, yes, okay. And then you could pick someone you want to increment for. All right, now, look at this. We are on a live URL. And whatever that was, 20, 30, 40 minutes, we have a live URL that our judges can go to. We have a live app that's talking to a live smart contract on mainnet. What what am I doing? And we're about to pay real money to increment a stupid, (laughs) immutable, censorship-resistant, infinite counter. Oh, I didn't even look at how much it costs. What's that? One minute. One minute. It was $4. (laughs) Oh, that hurts. I've actually deployed a smart contract on a live stream, and it cost me $1,500 to deploy the contract. I, it was like peak bull run, too, so it is like the most regret. Like, I have so much cringe feeling around that. Okay, we did it, though. The, it, the, it's one, right? We, we've actually incremented our counter. Let's do, let's do ATG.eth. Let's pay another four bucks, you guys. I love it. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, it's only three bucks now. 
gas went down, no, it was four, wasn't it? So that's it, you're able to tinker, you're able to build out a front end, it has all these nice components, it has all this nice debugging that comes along with it, but at the end, you come up with an app that your users can go to at a live URL, and they're talking to a live smart contract, and if you want to dig into this more and learn more, go to speedrunethereum.com. Scaffold ETH is at scaffoldeth.io. And all of this is funded by Build Guild and the EF and Optimism Retro PGF. And we're so happy to be here. And thank you for having me. So that was Austin Griffin. Sorry, I had to put him on 1.2 fast forward. So he fit in 40 minute slots. Uh, yeah.